Okay, carrying on. Question two on the Geometry P book. Um, again, this is exam one, so PEA one. Um, so, now we're taking a look at our angle rules and our line rules. Um, we see two parallel lines. Uh, again, indicated one because they tell you, but also because of the little arrows, that means that they're parallel. So calculate the size of angle FGD. Angle FGD. So FGD. They want to know that one there. So, what information have they given us? Angle AEG is 132. Angle EGF, this guy down here, is 86 degrees. And we're looking for this one. Okay. Um, for all these problems, there's always going to be more than one way to solve the problem. But I'll just go with what I've seen first. So, looking at this, I actually see co-interior angles here. They're inside the elbows there. So, co-interior angles add to 180. So, we can find <coughs> angle EGC by going 180 minus 132. And this is co-interior angles equal 180 for our reason. So 180 minus 132 is going to give us 48 degrees. So we know this angle down here is 48 degrees. And now I see that I've got angles on a straight line. So <coughs> I can just do the subtraction. Angle F G, D is going to be equal to 180 degrees, angles on a straight line add up to 180, minus 86, minus 48, and that is going to give us 46 degrees. So that's our answer. And again, there are other ways to look at this problem and other ways to do it. And if you're going about it, as long as you got 46 degrees as your answer, that's just fine. Okay, looking at question B. Remember, diagram not drawn to scale. They never draw them to scale. They always try and trick you by making it look like something. So make sure you ignore what you think it should be from the way it looks. So identify a pair of similar triangles in the diagram and give reasons. So what are similar triangles? Similar triangles have equal angles. So all three angles in a similar triangle will be equal to all three angles in another triangle that's similar to it. So we need to prove that. Looking at the picture, I kind of see two similar triangles, so let's highlight those to begin with. There's the big triangle, and then there's the little triangle. So how do we prove that these are similar? So triangle A, B, E is similar to triangle C, D, E. Make sure you answer the question. And to prove it, giving our reasons, we need to prove that some of the angles are equal. So I'm going to get rid of these colors so we can look at the diagram in a different way. I need to prove that this angle here is the same size as this angle here. Because those are the two angles on the two different triangles that line up with each other. They're the similar angles. And then I need to prove that this angle here is equal to this angle here. And lastly, prove, well, they share the same angle there, so it's pretty easy to prove that those are equal. So what we're going to say, I guess we'll start with the bottom one first, because it seems to be the easiest. Angle C, E, D on the little triangle is equal to angle A, E, B, little triangle, big triangle. Um, because it's actually a shared angle. It's a shared angle. But we need to prove now that 
angle D C E is equal to angle B A E. And if we look at this and pay close attention, not maybe the best written question, but from looking at this, I'm going to say I'm assuming that these two lines are parallel. And if we assume these two lines are parallel, I know we're not supposed to assume anything, but they should have given you that information. Assuming those two lines are parallel, then we actually have corresponding angles. So if angle A or line A, B, and C, D are parallel, these two pink angles are um, corresponding angles. So we've got angle, again, DCE is equal to angle BEA because they're corresponding. Corresponding angles are equal. And here we're going to assume that AB is parallel to CD. And I'll just state it so they know in case they're wondering how I thought this stuff up. And my last statement here that I need to prove is that angle A, B, E is equal to angle C, D, E, the green angles. And again, those will be corresponding. Angles are equal. And one way to think about visualizing that is that if I actually pick up angle B, kind of like picking it up by its belly button, and I put it down on top of where I see angle D here. If I pick that one up and put it directly down on top of it, the two parallel lines will match up, and we can see that those angles will be identical. They're made from the same things. They're made from a parallel line and one shared line, parallel line and the one shared line. And same for these pick up A by its belly button, put it down on top of C, you can visualize that the lines match up perfectly, so we have corresponding angles that are equal. All right, calculate the mixing, missing length X. Um, sometimes it's easier to draw the triangles separately so you can visualize it a little bit better, and that's what I'll do here so that we have that information. So we'll start with the little triangle first, and that is C D, E, and the information that we know, that's length x. This is 4.8, and this is 6.0. And then looking at the bigger triangle, we have this information that we've got 18.0 across the top. And then they've given us this information like this. They said 4.8 and that this part of the triangle has a length of 19.2. So I know actually that total length by adding the two together, 19.2 plus 4.8 is equal to 24. So the whole length there is 24. And over here they've split this one up as well. We know that this is y and this is 6.0. So that whole length there would be y plus 6.0. That gives me the whole length if I added the two things together. Okay. And just to help us visualize it, here's our pink angles. Those are similar. Here's our green angles. Those are similar. And here's our yellow angles. Those are similar as well. And it's good to be able to identify which angles correspond to which angles on the triangles to help us solve the problem. So first thing that we're looking for is x and we're going to use ratios. So always um, put what you're looking for on top. And this just helps you come up with a fraction that's a lot easier to solve. So this is what I mean. I'm looking for x. I'm going to put it on top of a fraction. Now we want to think about what is x similar to on the other triangle. So x happens to be to be between the pink angle and the green angle. So looking on the other triangle, we see that 18 is the length between the pink and the green. So match up the angles, find the lengths that are similar. So between pink and green, x is equal to 18.0. And now we need to pick another bit of information. And so for the second bit of information, make sure it's something that you know on both of the triangles. 
So if I take a look at this, I know 6 on this triangle, but I don't actually know what y is, so it's not helpful. But between the green and the yellow, we've got 4.8. And between green and yellow, we've got 24. So let's put that information in. 4.8 and 24. So to kind of show you guys what I'm doing here with this fraction, inside of this fraction, it's all information from the small triangle. So two bits of information from the small triangle. And on this fraction, I've got two bits of information from the big triangle. So that's how we look at it in terms of sides of the equal sign. But if we look at it this way as well, these guys are similar. They're the length that are between the pink and the green. So length between pink and green on little triangle, length between pink and green on big triangle. And again, these are similar lengths. So one from each triangle, and we have, oops, not gonna let me write in the S. You've got the information, the similar lengths. We have 4.8 from the little triangle between green and yellow, and 24 on the big triangle between green and yellow. So you want to set up a fraction that's got information from only the little triangle, and information from only the big triangle, but going across the top, you want to make sure that the two things on the top are similar to each other, and the two things on the bottom are also similar to each other. So the sides that correspond to one another in terms of the similar triangles. And now, using a little of algebra, we'll solve for x. So I'll rewrite this over here. x over 4.8 is equal to 18.0 divided by 24, which means if we solve for x, um, we're going to times by 4.8 to get rid of the fraction. So 18.0 divided by 24 times 4.8 is equal to um, 3.6 centimeters. So what we found is that this length here is 3.6 centimeters, what they were looking for. Cool. Um, and we'll go ahead and solve the last part of this similar triangle problem. So calculate the missing length y. So in this case, we're looking at the other part of the triangle. So let's just come back to that diagram that I've drawn and figure out what information we're going to use. So in part three, we're looking for y. So we need to find some of the information that lines up between pink and yellow. So we know that the distance between pink and yellow on the big triangle is actually y plus 6. And the distance between pink and yellow on the little triangle is 6. So we're going to use that information. So starting with what I want to find out, y plus 6 going to be equal to 6 on the little triangle. So starting with the big triangle this time, y plus 6 is similar to 6 on the little triangle. y plus 6 is equal to the pink and yellow, and 6 is equal to the pink and yellow here. And now let's pick off a second bit of information that we know both pieces for. So it seems easy to me to use the same information that we did before. Um, so we can use um, we can use the uh, 24, the green to yellow and green to yellow. So 24 and 4.8 again. So 24 is on the big one, and 4.8 is on the little one. And now using algebra. So again, let's just write that out again. This is from the big triangle, so both sides of that fraction are from the big triangle, and both sides of this fraction are from the little triangle. And across the top, those are the similar sides between pink and yellow. Similar. And across the bottom, those are also similar between the green and yellow. And now solving for this. So we're going to times both sides by 24, so we get 6 times 24 divided by 4.8. And if we put that into our calculator, we get 
Um, 6 times 24 divided by 4.8 gives us 30. So y plus 6 is equal to 30. And now to get rid of the plus 6, remember that we do opposites, so we need to subtract 6 from both sides. So 30 minus 6 is going to give us 24. So y is equal to 24. And that solves the similar problem triangle. So again, when you're solving these problems, we're looking at setting up a fraction with two bits of information from each triangle, making a fraction, and that if you go across the top, those two bits of information are similar for each triangle, and if you go across the bottom, again, you're setting up bits of information that are similar for each triangle.